Uh, that's because you're not paying attention and also not reading the communication with Ori and... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Maybe write down the title. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what the title is, but uh, I'll talk about uh, automaton groups and some uh, related things uh, and what we know and don't know about them. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I should uh, start uh, by maybe apologizing to uh, some people in the audience who are uh, experts on this, who uh, have worked on this for many years and uh, might be bored by uh, a large part of my talk. So, so to those experts, uh, my best suggestion, there were a few very interesting problems yesterday, so you can solve them. <laughs> and um, so, so what's the idea of an uh, automaton group? And, uh, and uh, fundamentally, the, the formal definition uh, starts uh, by talking about automorphisms of rooted trees. But uh, let me start uh, instead by with an example. And consider the function uh, f of n is n plus 1. So if you want to, uh, if you are given a number n as a sequence of digits, uh, so uh, any example of a number? 17. 17. Another number? Hmm? 14, yeah. So if you have some number like this and you want to add 1, then uh, you, uh, as you were taught in uh, grade school, so you start at the last digit. So this is n, so for n plus 1. So you start with, uh, you add 1. And in this case, you, uh, the, there's no overflow. So uh, you don't get to 9. So, you, so, the, so afterwards, you just uh, have the same uh, digits as above. But if you have a number like, uh, uh, 1799 and, uh, and then n plus 1. So, so you have the 9, so instead you put a 0, and then uh, when you move to the next digit, you still add 1. So then this operation, you can describe it algorithmically. So you just uh, replace the digit by 1. The first digit, uh, you increase by 1. And if it was uh, not 9, then, you, then the rest of the digits they just say the same. If it was a 9, then you just apply the same operation to the remaining uh, digits. So now you'll have a 0 here, and now here you'll have an 8. And, uh, so, that's, uh, so that's the operation of adding n to n plus 1. Now, uh, you can describe this. Uh, you can describe numbers as, uh, as something like the ternary tree, as paths on the ternary tree. So this, is the, so this will be the, the, the ones digits. And then you have the tens digit and the hundreds digits. So the number uh, 99, so you'll have 99 here, and here you'll have uh, numbers that end with two zeros. And maybe here you'll have 100, and so 17 will be something like here. Um, some of the edges are missing in this picture. So, uh, OK, and uh, the operation of adding n to n plus 1, uh, is you can check, is just uh, an automorphism on this tree. So any uh, any finite vertex is mapped to some other finite vertex. And this extends to an automorphism of the whole tree. And if you think of the whole tree, uh, <laughs> so uh, formally the, the infinite tree, you can think if you, if you add all of the infinite paths. So the natural numbers correspond to paths that end eventually <coughs> with zeros, that uh, from some point on you have only zeros. And uh, it's natural to extend this uh, to the negative numbers, uh, which are paths that uh, have all nines from some point on. So if you start with a, now with a path that is all nines, and you add one, then you find that you just uh, you apply the same algorithm, you just get all zeros. And formally, uh, formally, uh, this will be the ten adic numbers. Uh, so uh, so this is the compactification of the integers, and uh, if you they behave a bit nicer if you take a, a prime base instead of 10, but it uh, makes perfect sense for any, also for 10. Uh, and you have the operation of uh, mapping n to n plus 1. So this is uh, some automorphism of the tree. So, uh, so in general, if you have the m regular tree Tm, uh, then you have the automorphisms. Uh, you have the automorphisms of uh, the tree Tm, and uh, mapping n to n plus 1 is one such automorphism. And you can consider the you can consider the group uh, this, that it spans. So uh, if if you look at what uh, subgroup of the automorphism will be spanned by this, then you just uh, have n to n plus two to spend. Uh, you can add any integer. So uh, so this is just gives you a 
the group Z. And uh, it turns out that many other groups can be uh, encoded relatively easily in, in automorphisms of the tree. It's an exercise is to take your favorite group and see how to do this. And depending on what your favorite group is, it can be an easy or a difficult exercise. But, uh, but many uh, different uh, groups uh, can be described in this way. Now, these are not yet the automaton groups. So the automaton groups are a, are a special group which can be uh, where the generators can be described using uh, a finite state automaton. So what is an automaton? Uh, if you studied a bit about uh, things like Turing machines and such, so uh, you, have, uh, you can think of a computer program. It receives uh, some input, which is in some alphabet, and has some output. And uh, it also has some internal state. So, uh, uh, so it has several possible states. Uh, we restrict to finitely many states. Uh, and uh, given uh, what was the previous state uh, of the automaton and what was the input, uh, you have a new state as the output. So you have some... Uh, so so the automaton, so you have some states, S, and you have some uh, alphabet, which, uh, let's say, is uh, the M possible digits. And now you have some, uh, so uh, you have some function, uh, you have one function, which is the output, which is a function of uh, the output, which is a function from S times M, uh, to the, sorry, to the alphabet, and you have the new state, which is also, uh, which gives you the new state uh, as a state. So this is uh, the general automaton, but if we want this to be an automorphism uh, of the, okay, so an automaton uh, can give you an automorphism of the emery tree, where you just look at, uh, so if you have some sequence, uh, x0, x1, x2, x3, so it's written uh, like that. So you, so where xi is one of the letters of the alphabet, so you just uh, have some initial state, so you uh, apply it to the input uh, x0, you get output y0, and now you have a new state uh, given by this, and now you continue as, uh, on the previous ones. So, uh, the, so the automaton that uh, adds one, has two states. You either still want to add one or you are finished. And if you still want to add one, then, uh, then if you have input i, the output is i plus one. And if i was nine, then the new state is zero. Then uh, if i was nine, then uh, you still want to add one in the next, uh, at the next state. If, any, if i was anything other than nine, then uh, you move to the state that you have finished. So, uh, so this, uh, so this is a very simple automaton with uh, two states. One of the states is the trivial states where you no longer do anything. So yes, so, yes. So finished means that uh, you now just do the identity. So, uh, so you have the terminal state uh, where you do nothing. And uh, these terminal states, uh, uh, you always uh, stay in this state. So it's defined as the output is equal to the input. And the new state is always the same state. So, and if you start with this state, then you just have the identity automorphism. So that's a very important state. So uh, we, are, we certainly want our automatons to include, uh, to include this state. And, uh, but okay, but any automaton uh, and any state, uh, you have some, for any starting state, you have some automorphism of the tree. And conversely, uh, Okay, and if you have such an automaton, then the corresponding automaton group is the subgroup that is spanned by the different states. So the, the automaton group, so this is uh, spanned or generated by the, by the states uh, acting on the, on the tree. So if you, uh, if you like, you can just uh, think of acting on the infinite sequences, but, uh, but uh, we can talk about action on the whole thing. <coughs> now, in order for this to be an automorphism, there is one uh, extra constraint. So, this, so the output needs to be an input, a permutation of the input. So if you always output 0 no matter what input, then uh, this is not an automorphism. You map several vertices to the same place. So this should be... 
So, so this would be a permutation for each state s. And, and if we are given any automaton, we get, uh, we get a group. So, uh, so these uh, groups uh, have a fairly, uh, a fairly uh, long history, which uh, I, uh, I'm not completely aware of uh, all of the history, and I will not attempt to recount it. But, uh, but certainly, uh, these things uh, are, uh, have proven to be a, an interesting source of uh, examples uh, for groups with uh, many interesting properties. Um, so, uh, so one of the first uh, interesting cases uh, is the Basilica group, uh, which was introduced uh, as uh, introduced by uh, Grigor Chuk and Zuk uh, as, a, as a possible group, uh, which is uh, ex which has exponential growth, but is uh, but is non uh, non elementary amenable. Uh, this was uh, eventually uh, proved uh, to be the case. Um, uh, the Grigor Chuk's group uh, with exponential growth has. Uh, uh, with uh, intermediate growth uh, as a natural uh, description, uh, so maybe just to uh, so maybe just to give uh, the description uh, of this in terms of an automaton. So uh, so Gregor Schultz group uh, acts on the binary tree. So uh, so it is uh, so m is two, and we have uh, and actually let me make a smaller tree. So. So we have several generators. Uh, so if you are acting on the tree, so you either, to, if you have an automorphism of the tree, then you either swap the two sides or you don't swap. So there are two possibilities. <coughs> so uh, we have uh, four uh, generators for Grigorchuk's group. One generator uh, swaps the left and right side of the tree. So if you have uh, here A and here B, then, uh, then you are maps, so let's call him X and Y. So you just get, uh, x here and y here. So you just swap the two halves of the tree. And the other generators do something slightly more complicated. So you consider the left ray, uh, which is fixed. So, uh, so, the, so this is a fixed ray. And then you have a the subtree is above it, so so you apply this generator on a s on some of the subtrees uh, just after the branch uh, from this ray. So uh, the other generators you apply. Uh, so if this is generator is called A, so you have one generator that applies generator A here, here, but then you skip it. So here you have the identity, and then you have A A identity. So it's just a uh, with period three, and you have two other generators that are the same thing, but they start the period in other places. So those are the generators of uh, Grigor Schuch's group, and you can easily see that uh, this is described by a, by an automaton. So you you either have uh, the state where you are going to do this, or you have the state where you are going to do this, or you have the identity state. And and if you have uh, if you have in the tree, if you have at level m you have uh, some vertex. So this vertex is going to be mapped to some other vertex on the same level. And the subtree above this is going to be mapped to the, to the subtree above this level. And what we are, and in the case of an automaton, uh, we, have the, we have that uh, the action on this subtree is just the action of one of the states of the automaton plus moving it here. Now, in this particular case, uh, you see that the actions on the subtrees are uh, mostly very simple. So in some cases, you have uh, swapping the trees. And OK, and, uh, you, you, do have, uh, you do have this uh, somewhat more complicated action uh, here. But if you, look above the, uh, if you look above this point, for example, on, the, on this subtree, then again, you have one of these uh, three actions. But you can look, if you look at any other vertex uh, above this, then you either have uh, one, you might have one vertex where you, where you see this action. So above this vertex, you just swap the left and right half of the tree. 
but above all other vertices, you just do nothing. So you, so you can see that, uh, that uh, the, okay, so these things are called the sections. So if you have, the, if you have an automorphism of the tree, then, then the action on a subtree like this is called the section at this, at this vertex. And we see that uh, in uh, Gregor Krug's group, the sections are, uh, the sections are almost always uh, the identity for almost all vertices at a given level. And this leads to the notion of the, of the activity of, uh, of the activity uh, of, uh, of uh, an automaton group. So acti the activity is the, is the number of uh, vertices in level N where the section is uh, not the identity. So Gregor Schuch's group has bounded activity. So at every level uh, you have, uh, I guess, uh, one or two. Uh, Yes, yes, uh, in, sorry, that, so the activity for an automorphism. For a specific automorphism of the tree, the, we can define the activity, so this is a sequence. If you uh, compose two generators, if you, if, you compose two, uh, if you compose two automorphisms of the tree, then the activities are at most additive, so uh, it's at most the sum of the, the, sum of the activities. So if you uh, take any, so uh, in Gregor Chuk's uh, group, the generators have uh, bounded activity. In, every, in any layer, it's at most two. So if you take any product of these uh, automorphisms, uh, it's always bounded for any element of the group. So, uh, so the structure of the permutation that you do are, are like the same for all the vertices, but you, know, you don't consider this yes, interaction. So Exactly, so exactly. The section is the relative permutation. So it's a permutation relative to, relative to the root of the subtree. Um, okay, so, uh, so uh, the, there is a basic heuristic which goes back to Sidki, uh, maybe even before, I don't know, but, uh, but there is certainly a theorem uh, of Sidki uh, from 2000 which says that, uh, that uh, if you have an automaton uh, with a polynomial, act polynomial activity, so if, uh, is a polynomial in N, uh, then there is no free subgroup. <coughs> so, uh, Okay, so it is certain, it's certainly possible to uh, find uh, finite state automatons where you get a free group, but, uh, but those have uh, exponentially growing activity. And because of this additivity uh, of the activity when you multiply, it's enough to check this for the generators. You don't need to... So if, it, if this holds for the generator for a polynomial of some degree, then it holds for every element of the group with uh, maybe a different uh, constant, but uh, the same degree polynomial. So that's uh, the next uh, comment. So, uh, so indeed, uh, okay. So indeed, uh, we all know uh, that uh, in groups uh, that are uh, not polynomial might be sub-exponential, but uh, the activity it turns out is uh, is either polynomial or exponential, and this is for the following reason. So let's consider the graph of the states. So these are the states, and at each, so these are the states. So at each state, we have some permutation on the alphabet. So, so we have some element of SM, uh, which tells us what is the output as a function of the input. Um, that's the not uh, the state, but the symmetric group. But, but we also have some arrows that tell us what state we go to, depending on what the input was. Of course, it's uh, perfectly possible to uh, have uh, loops in this graph, and you can have uh, multiple edges uh, as well. But uh, but the point is that if you look at this directed graph, then uh, you can check what are the cycle structure of the, what, what happens to oriented cycles in this graph. 
So, uh, okay, so somewhere you have the identity. Let's say that here you have the, the, the trivial uh, identity state uh, where the permutation is the identity and you just, and this is a sink. So you want to know how many paths in the, do you have in this graph that, uh, that do not end at the identity. How many paths you have of length n that do not end at the identity. And the number of uh, such paths uh, in any directed graph, it's uh, relatively easy to check is either, uh, either grows polynomially or exponentially. So if you have two, if you have, uh, two directed cycles uh, that uh, are strongly connected, then uh, you have exponentially many. If you do not, then it's going to be polynomial with some degree. So in this case, so in this case you have this starting point. From here you can only move into this cycle, and you can traverse this cycle any number of times, uh, but in this case it, you will get a uh, bounded activity. If you want to have a path of length n that does not reach the identity, then the only option is to just uh, go around. Sorry, if you do not have this, okay. without this self-loop, you, you can only go around the cycle. With this self-loop, it's going to be linear, because you can just stay on this uh, self-loop for some number of times, and then move, to move here, and then you stay on this cycle for a number of times. So the only choice is when to make this move. <coughs> so, this, so this example, you will get something linear something with the linear activity. Um, okay, so, uh, so we have this uh, result of Sidki that, uh, that in the case of uh, polynomial activity, uh, there's no free subgroup, uh, suggesting that, uh, that there is a connection between complexity of the automaton and complexity of the group. And the conjecture that uh, he made is that uh, if you have any polynomial activity automaton, then the group is amenable. So, so that's uh, polynomial activity implies that the group is amenable. And uh, this conjecture is still open. However, there have been uh, a number of uh, steps towards this. Uh, so uh, so uh, going back a bit over the history of this, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, one, so an early result by Bartholdi and Virag, they uh, proved that the Basilica group is amenable, and this has been extended uh, by Kaimanovich. Uh, this is... Uh, um, around 2005, and then um, Bartholdi, Kaimanovich, and uh, Nekrashevich uh, were able to prove uh, that for any bounded, that if you have any bounded activity uh, automaton, then the group is amenable. So, uh, so that's uh, so that's the case of degree zero polynomials, and. Uh, and later, uh, with Gidi Amir and Valent Virag, uh, we were able to uh, extend this to the linear case, to the case of linear activity, uh, so uh, degree one polynomials. And now uh, we can also do degree two polynomials. <laughs> so, so there's a series of results uh, with uh, some years between them, uh, uh, from degree zero to degree one to degree two, and uh, you can uh, you can guess that. Uh, the sequence will continue, but uh, there are some obstacles. And the, the main obstacle, well, okay, I'll uh, come to the obstacles uh, later in the talk. Um, now, the, the main uh, tool that uh, was used to prove the, the amenability in the case of degree zero and degree one is to show uh, actually something stronger, uh, namely that the groups are Liouville. So, uh, and uh, this is done by analyzing the entropy of random walks on the groups. Now, for degree zero, in the case of a uh, bounded activity, uh, okay, so uh, you can sort of, uh, if you think a bit about how these things work, about how they about how much uh, complexity you have when you multiply some generators of this, you can see that uh, if most of the sections uh, at the level n are the identity, 
then uh, the group elements don't have so much uncertainty them. So it's not too much entropy. So, so it's somewhat plausible that there will be uh, that entropy will not be too large. Uh, that's the basic idea that's been used. But uh, okay, but okay. So this has been made uh, uh, precise in the series of papers that I mentioned. So for uh, bounded activity and uh, linear activity, so in a later paper uh, with uh, Gideon Mirbalint, Virag, and uh, Nicolas Matebon uh, in the back, uh, we were able to show uh, this for the linear activity for any set of generators. So, so let me just try to uh, summarize the theorems uh, that we have. So, so uh, if uh, the degree, so this is the degree of the polynomial. So if d is less than or equal to 1, uh, then, uh, the group it's, uh, then the group is Liouville for any uh, measure mu uh, of bounded support. So uh, uh, symmetric. Yeah. So. Uh, so in this case, and uh, and uh, theorem that we can now uh, also show, if d is equal to two, then the group is amenable. <coughs> However, we do not know that it's Liouville. So I'll say some things about uh, how uh, we get this. Um, But uh, faster raise. So uh, so let's see anything more of the background. Remember, um, oh, where's my timer? Okay. So uh, okay. So uh, we want to understand uh, how these groups. Uh, Yes, okay, so let me just uh, let me state the conjecture. The conjecture is that it's also a uh, Liouville uh, for uh, degree 2, but uh, not uh, d greater than 2. So uh, for, uh, for degree greater than 2, then this is known. Yes, right. Almost. Uh, yes, uh, okay, in, indeed. So. Uh, for degree greater than two, uh, this is uh, known by a paper of uh, Gideon Mir and Baldwirag, except for the case that d is equal to two and m is also equal to two. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I should. Yeah. I, I should be precise. Uh, not always. So of course uh, you can even have finite groups which have uh, and which have exponential activity, so uh, so you can sadly have also uh, also very simple groups with a uh, high with large activity, but but not in general. And this is the so this is known except in the case where the degree two and uh, and uh, the and m is also equal to two. So if you look at the binary tree. Um, now the way uh, that uh, that uh, these things uh, were proved uh, for the degree zero and one <coughs> is uh, okay. So at least uh, the amenability in the case degree zero is one. Uh, it was proved by by looking just at a single uh, automaton group, and this is one of the fundamental ideas that uh, goes back to uh, the works of Bartholdi and uh, Bartholdi, Kaimanovich, and Krashevich. And this is the notion of the mother group. So, uh, and uh, they defined uh, a certain very specific group, a very specific automaton group uh, with a given, uh, which, uh, which you can then show that any automaton group is contained as a subgroup of the automaton group, uh, of the mother group. So uh, this was initially for bound degrees, and uh, with uh, Gideon Balint, we extend this to any degree. So, uh, 
So this contains uh, an, uh, this contains a copy of uh, any automaton. So for amenability, it's enough to prove that the mother group is amenable. And the mother group uh, is much more symmetric. So, uh, so what are the generators of the mother group? So uh, the generators of the mother group uh, act in the following way. So, uh, so let's uh, consider something. Uh, so x is a non-zero digit, and, uh, and the zeros are zero digits. So, uh, so the x's are not necessarily all the same digit. So the generators of the mother group uh, act in the following way. So we have one generator that just applies a permutation to the lowest level to the last digit and does nothing afterwards. So this is like the A in uh, Grigor Chuk's group. So uh, we have the, so these are called the degree, uh, we call them the rank minus one. So rank minus one, uh, so you just, uh, permute uh, the last digit. And you can apply any permutation. So we have uh, m factorial uh, generators of this type. Degree 0, or the rank 0 uh, uh, automorphism, so they do the following thing. So they uh, go over the, they go over uh, the digits uh, from the last digits uh, up, so you go up the tree, and you skip all the zeros. So skipping the zeros just means that if you see a zero, then the output is also a zero, and you stay in the same state for the automaton. When you see a non-zero digit, you also skip that digit, so you, uh, so you leave that digit the same, so you have, so this will be the rank one. But then here you have some, uh, permutation of the next digit. So if the next digit happens to be a zero, you have some output. If it's a one, you have some other output. So you apply some permutation which depends on uh, x. So for each uh, x and each permutation, uh, you have uh, some generator of, of rank one, which uh, just uh, skips the zero. When you get to the x, then you know what permutation you apply to the next digit. You permute the next digit. And afterwards, you just uh, copy the same thing. You just uh, so afterwards, you just revert to the identity. You just move to a certain state of rank minus one, basically? Yes, exactly. So you move, okay. exactly. So you move to the state of rank minus one. Specifically to the identity. So when you, reach, when you reach this digit, you move to a state of rank minus one. And then after the next one, you move to, to, the, to the identity. And it's, uh, OK, it's very easy to see that. Uh, that if you have uh, the, so if you have all generators of rank minus one and rank zero, then this gives you a bounded activity. Because if you want to have, uh, if you want to have, if you have some word, if you want to have some non-trivial action on, uh, on those letters, then uh, the only way for, the only way for this to happen is if either you have all zeros up to there, or you have all zeros you must, so you must have all zeros up to here, and then here you might have something non-zero. So uh, in any other case, when you reach those letters, you'll already revert to the identity. So, so, this so in this case, you, you end up with a bounded activity. With a bounded activity. <laughs> but uh, when you have those generators, uh, then uh, you can... Uh, also, uh, I mean, if you can maybe guess what will be the rank one generators. And the rank one generators, you just go over the digits. You skip the first non-zero digit. Uh, you go to the second non-zero digit, and you permute the letter after that. And uh, rank two, and so on. And uh, um, so. And the permutation per depends on uh, the first uh, non-zero digit, that you, on the last non-zero digit that you, that you read. So Only the last one? Um, yeah, you could, yeah, I guess you could also on the first. Um, let's see, so. 
Yes, 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 you can take, yes, you, it depends on the, on, the, on all of the non-zero digits that you see. Ah. Yeah, but not on, uh, not on the locations, just on uh, which digits they were. So, uh, so this uh, leaves, uh, gives, lets us define uh, MMD, so this is the mother group uh, for the, on uh, the M regular tree with the, uh, where you have rank at most D. And if you have rank at most D, then this is uh, an automaton group uh, with uh, polynomial activity uh, D. <coughs> and so, uh, okay, so uh, what we can uh, show, uh, so, uh, so is the theorem is that uh, that uh, this is amenable for d less than or equal to 2. And for d 0 and 1, uh, we prove this by analyzing entropy. So uh, for 0, it goes back to the works uh, of uh, Bartoldi, Kaimanovich, Verdik, and Bartoldi, Virag. Uh, they uh, show that, uh, and they show that, then that entropy is, uh, sub grows sublinearly. So a zero asymptotic entropy, uh, then uh, for d equals one the same. For d equals two, uh, we can't uh, show that the entropy is sublinear. And instead, we rely on uh, a newer method, uh, which uh, goes uh, to uh, Jushenko, Nekrashevich, and De La Salle. And uh, this method is based on uh, the study of, uh, of the actions uh, of the group on a... Uh, well, okay, in general, it's a study of action, so this is not, uh, this is not completely new, but they have a criterion uh, which, uh, which says, uh, so, let's see, so Dushenko, Nekra, I guess, Shevich, uh, De La Salle. <coughs> so uh, if you have, uh, if G, acts on a, if G acts on some uh, space X and the Schreier graph is recurrent, so uh, the Schreier graph, you just connect every X to, uh, to the image of it under some uh, of the generators of G. And uh, recurrent plus you need a condition of amenability of the germ groups so uh, roughly you want to know what is the action on neighborhoods of points uh, and you want uh, this to be amenable, then they can show that the group, they, they, could, they conclude that the group is amenable. So this is a general tool that they developed. And uh, and using, uh, using this tool, uh, we need to study in order to prove amenability, we can uh, understand, we need to understand the Schreier graph. And, uh, and so the Schreier graph that uh, we study, uh, so if you, have, uh, if you have the tree, so you can take any infinite ray in the tree and you can consider the orbit of this ray uh, with respect to the group. And you want, uh, so this gives you uh, the countable graph and we want this graph uh, to be recurrent. And uh, you can approximate this graph. So uh, it turns out for with the mother group, the natural uh, thing to take is the zero ray. And, it's, uh, and uh, the way to understand this graph is by looking at uh, the mth vertex along this ray. So this is just, uh, or n, uh, the nth vertex. So you have uh, just n zeros. And you, so you have this level, uh, level n, which has uh, m to the n uh, different vertices. And we want to understand this graph. And uh, the, 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 the Schreier graph in the infinite case is just a local limit of this uh, graph uh, as n goes to infinity. So uh, how does this graph look like? Let me just uh, show you the first few uh, cases. Uh, and let's start with m equals 2. So we are looking at the binary tree. So uh, if you look at level 0, you just have one vertex 0. So uh, it's a very simple graph. It's almost the simplest graph. 
So if you look at level one, you have two vertices, uh, zero and one, and uh, you have an edge between them. If you have uh, the next uh, level, so you have the vertices are zero, 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 one, 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 and one, zero. And you can see, so the generator of rank minus one connects uh, these two vertices and these two vertices, since you can flip the last digit. The generator of rank, uh, so let's spin this again. So the generator of rank zero, so this is a permute digit. Uh, uh, um, okay, so let's write left of uh, the last non-zero. So the, so the generator of rank one, zero connects this. So the graph is just a path of length three. But in order to in order to go forward, let's, uh, let's write it like this. Now, if you only have rank 0 and rank 1, so if you look at the next level, you can just put uh, the extra digit 0 in front of all of them. And then you have the, the, the same copy with a 1 ahead of it. So you have this, uh, so you have this path of length 3. And finally, you also have an edge of rank. Uh, so these are, so here you have also a rank uh, zero edge. So you get a path of length seven. And uh, it's easy to check and convince yourself if you look just at rank minus one and zero, then you just get a path with two to the n uh, vertices. So uh, what, how am I for time, by the way? So it's, it's, it's 10 to 11 now. Okay, lots of time, good. Good, I might even have time to give my other talk. <laughs> 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 so, uh, right, so if you, have, uh, if you have just rank minus one and zero, then, uh, the path is, then you just get a path uh, of length two to the n, two to the n vertices. And uh, you will just alternate uh, rank minus one, rank zero edges. Uh, there is a famous uh, mechanical puzzle based on this principle where you have uh, traditionally seven rings uh, that are uh, connected to some uh, bar with some uh, things sliding and there's a loop that, that can be hooked through some of these rings and not through the others. Uh, and uh, really you have two moves that you can make and uh, in order to go from, uh, from this or this configuration where you're hooked through all the rings to release the bar, you have to traverse this path. So, so that's... Uh, and just a side comment. So that's, uh, so this graph is certainly recurrent. Uh, if, you, in the, if you look at the infinite uh, version of this, you just get an infinite path and, and there's no uh, problems. Now, in order to go beyond, uh, beyond this case, we need to understand two things. What happens when you go from M A equals, when, we, when you increase M, because we need to, to worry about the other groups of, of other M's. And we also need to see what happens when you increase the degree D. So if you increase the, so if you increase M, um, let's do this here. If you increase M, then you, now you have not just zeros and ones, but you have zeros, ones, and twos, let's say, if M is three. So if you're in base three, so now you have zero, zero, and let's uh, look at the case of uh, N equals two. So this connects to 0, 1, 0, 2, and you c these are also connected because you, can, uh, because you can permute the last digit. And then uh, this goes to uh, 1, 1, and to 2, 1. And this goes to 1, 2, and to 2, 2. And there are also some edges between them. So we, we have uh, an edges here, but we also have an edges from 1, 2, to, to 1, 1, which, uh, okay, let me not draw this uh, to avoid the... Uh, making the picture even messier. And this goes to 1, 0, and this also goes to 1, 0, this goes to 2, 0, and this, and you have this. And you can see that you still have some kind of a linear structure. If you look at the distance from a 0, 0, you still have the same linear structure, and you can project it to a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. If you just look at uh, for each digit, if it's 0 or non-zero, 
then you can just uh, project these graphs onto the, onto the path. And this is true in general for any m. You can project the graph by just considering which digits are 0 and which are non-zero. So this gives a projection uh, from uh, m to the n uh, to 2 to the n. We have some uh, projection just by considering which digits are non-zero. Now this projection creates a lot of uh, self-loops. So any two vertices uh, in the layer that are connected by an edge, so you'll get uh, some self-loop here. But if you contract all of those vertices uh, into a single vertex, uh, this can only, uh, so this can only increase uh, uh, conductances. Uh, so uh, if we show that this graph is recurrent, then certainly this graph will also be recurrent. Now this also uh, duplicates edges. Because now we have, uh, so here we had two edges, here we have four edges, and here we also have four edges. So the number of edges uh, between two vertices on this path depends on the number of non-zero digits that they have here. So it's something like <laughs> m to the number of non-zero digits that you have. So that's the effect of, uh, of increasing m. The effect of uh, increasing the degree is more interesting since we want to go to uh, degree 1, degree 2, and so on. So if you want to study degree 1, uh, so let's keep this, but let's just draw the graph without the labels now. So we have, uh, so for degree 1, When you add the generator of, the, of rank 1, it turns out that there's one extra edge that you get, which goes from the vertex 0, 1, 1 to the vertex 1, 1, 1, because you can skip two non-zero digits and then change the next digit. So this is the graph that we get. And in general, the rule to go from one graph to the next graph when you increase n, it goes as follows. So you make another <laughs> copy of the graph. So you sort of take a mirror image. So and the labels just correspond to adding another one ahead of the previous label. So you take a mirror image, and then in the lower half, you add another edge here, like this, whenever the degree is at most, uh, whenever the degree is not already 3. So uh, we, have a rank, we have edges of rank 0, 1, and, and minus 1. So each vertex here has degree at most 3. This edge? No, from 1 to 2. From? From a yes, B so this is an edge that corresponds to a generator of rank 1. Right, but why didn't you have why, why not this one? Okay, so, uh, so here's the rule. You, you only make these extra edges from the, lay from the second half of the graph. So initially you have the first half of the graph and the second half of the graph. So, when you, so you make the mirror, so you can think of this and you make the mirror image and you only create the edges on the second half of the graph. So this graph, you can, it's nicer to draw it like this. But this is the same graph. Well, can you write the label of uh, some of the vertices? Um, which ones? <laughs> yes, I, uh, yes, I can. No, I will not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, OK, so what are the labels? So, uh, so generally, uh, the labels in the lower half are the same as the labels in the upper half, except with the one appended at the beginning, just uh, with a reflection like that. And the labels of the one that were written before. So, so we could look at the video. And so, <laughs> yeah, so the first four labels, so it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then you have 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0. And, if you, and you reflect. Yes, so you add, yeah, so. You add a, so so to go to the next one, so this is size 16, to go to the one of size 32, uh, so you put, uh, so again, uh, this one uh, you can draw slightly, uh, in a slightly cleaner way. Uh, you have the path of length 7 with the extra edge, and now you have the other path of length 7 with the extra edge, so that's the top half and the bottom half, and you have the three new edges between them. And now to go to the next one, you uh, take another copy of the same thing, um, like that, but then uh, let's use color for the new edges. So for just from the second half, you connect an edge to the mirror e to the partner here, but when but only where the degree was not already three. So, so those. 
So you have this uh, sort of uh, fractal construction. So this one, uh, so this one is no longer planar. So certainly these are not going to be planar graphs in general. Um, but uh, okay, so you can keep going, and we want to show that uh, this graph is recurrent. Um, now, uh, how much time is it? Okay, let yes. So let me just say, uh, how do we uh, how do we show that these graphs are recurrent? So in the case of rank one, it's just a path. So you so obviously you have. Uh, you have two to the n different cut sets. Uh, if, you look, if you look from this vertex to this vertex, if you just have the path, uh, then uh, the resistance is obviously the length of the path. Because you have uh, every edge uh, separates them. Now, when you take uh, rank 1, like this, then uh, you no longer have a path, but uh, you can think of it as a path with some extra edges. So, uh, so the first one that you get, uh, we said you have the, this path plus one extra edge like this. Then the next one, if you stretch it out, so you get these two copies of the path with the edge like this, but then you have also some extra edges uh, that uh, look something like this. And then the next one, again, you can duplicate this to the right and you put some extra edges. Now, some of these extra edges are going to be quite long. You, uh, the longest edge is one that goes roughly from, uh, uh, from one quarter of the path to three quarters of the path. So it circumvents uh, half of the path. But, but you might expect that, uh, that electrically this should maybe still be a bit like a path. And this suggests looking at uh, the following cut sets. So for any location along this path, you can just consider all of the edges that uh, go above this location. So for any location, this gives you a cut set. And we want to do something like Nash-Williams. So, uh, so if these cut sets were disjoint, then uh, it boils down to uh, some fairly messy combinatorics of how many edges there are uh, in each of those cut sets and where do they go. And, uh, but uh, these cut sets are not disjoint. So uh, there's a fairly uh, elementary uh, extension of the Nash-Williams criterion uh, for cut sets that are not disjoint. Essentially, you can think of uh, if you have uh, an edge that takes part in several cut sets, you can just uh, think of replacing it by a number of edges uh, sequentially, and then you just take in each of the cut sets, you take one of them. So now you have these joint cut sets, and, uh, and you can apply uh, Nash-Williams. So uh, you can write down uh, what this boils down to. You can also do this without uh, this uh, actual step of uh, splitting the edges. Uh, this Yes. The, well, the resistance of the edge uh, is split into uh, this, so the conductance uh, is split, uh, is distributed between the cut sets. Yes, and, uh, and this is, uh, turns out, is not quite, an, uh, is not quite enough. Uh, you also need to be a bit clever about how you split the conductance. So when you have an, uh, one of those long edges, you need to split it into a sequence of edges in series, and the resistance has to be separated in the right way uh, into this. So, uh, so you have to make the right choices of how to, uh, how to split the resistance. The eventual uh, result that we get in this case is that uh, the resistance uh, from, uh, from here to here in the graph of order n is of order n. So, uh, it was, uh, so in the rank 0 case, so in the bounded, uh, so, sorry, in the rank 1 case, uh, so in the rank 0 case, you get 2 to the n. In the rank uh, one case, you get uh, resistance of order n. In the rank uh, two case, in the quadratic case, we get resistance log n, which goes to infinity. So we go from two to the n, to n, to log n. Log n uh, is still unbounded, so the resistances are unbounded, and this is recurrent. And you might think, well, in the case three, in the degree three case, it will be log log n. And unfortunately, this is not the case. And this is, uh, this is something that uh, Gideon and Balit Virag uh, did had done uh, some years ago. And they get uh, upper bounds on uh, some of these resistances. And they show that when the degree is uh, 3 or more, uh, except, in the b except in the case of uh, the binary, except in the case of m equals 2 and degree 3, they show that the resistances are bounded. So these graphs are transient. So, uh, 
So this is not going to, uh, to work to, to prove uh, amenability beyond degree two. Um, and so, uh, so maybe this is a good place to stop and thank again to the organizers uh, for this interesting week and thank you. Mm. Um, I think maybe Gidi yeah, should so address this, uh, since it's his role. Like the mother groups of the Greek three or more, other than the case, the Greek three alphabet groups, and they are all not new groups. You, you can get from the transients, once the graph is transient, it's easy to, so to show that the group is not new So, yeah, so in some sense, the, the result I mentioned of Dushenko uh, and Nekrashev Jalasal is a converse to this. Uh, but, um, Yes, uh, for in the case of uh, M equals 2, this is uh, a bit of an annoying problem too. So as in the, it seems like uh, it shouldn't depend, but also the bounds that, uh, the bounds that uh, Gideon Valint have, uh, also for the degree 1 case, uh, you get a polynomial bound with an exponent that uh, is a, a non-integer, but the exponent depends on M, on the degree of the tree, and uh, this, uh, it doesn't seem like it belongs there. But so maybe the bounds can be improved. Um, so I th in this case, I think it's relatively straightforward. Yeah. What hmm? what um, but that's uh, long. Well, Rav, you you want to uh, look at? Uh, uh, hmm? So the group side one. Uh, um, let's. Okay. Okay. So. Nicolas and uh, Dutsenko de la Salle and Mekasev. This is what is called now extensive amenability. And basically, the condition there is wider than just recurrence of the accent, but it's not so applicable in transient cases. You know? So basically, there is a condition <coughs> that if you could prove on the graphs of the degree three or more some condition on small probability events, that invertent orbit related, mm -hmm. then the rest of the proof will go through. But these are much harder to understand from the graph than recurrence yeah. versus transients. Yes. So, in particular, uh, the whole electrical network theory does not help you there. So, is there any reason to think that the and the and the Extended to what? To which ones? To Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't uh, be certain. Uh, again, uh, there are some, uh, some other experts in the room that can maybe address this. Nicolas? Um, well, uh, I don't have any very convincing reason uh, to give you, so, uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, 
<laughs> <laughs> and von Neumann was a smart guy. <laughs>